So um, anyway, I, I apologize for missing t the Tuesday lecture. I was just under the weather, but it's good to be back. We are in week six, and I'm just going to dive into summary three, unless there's any other questions. Um, there, I, I did put a couple. Um, I did put a couple new problems out there on the problem set. But um, I think the, the two things I really want to cover today are just the, um, uh, the problem set. I'm sure there's still some questions on that. But then summary three. So let's just, let's just kick it off with, with summary three here. And, uh, I'll go ahead and click it. I haven't made it visible yet, but here it is. Okay, so what we're, what we're looking for, if you took 101, some of this is a little old hat for you. And there are videos out there for it, but I'll go ahead and, and run through the, the brief version of the exercise. So we're going to go to worldometers.info. So let's go there. And what I'm asking you to do here is, again, take these two variables. So again, if, if you did this for 101 already, there's already some kind of learning exercises in that you'll see that the world population has, in fact, gone up since December of, of 2016, where we left off. So I'm going to ask you to uh, pick up on the current world population again. I'm also going to ask you to pick up the CO2 emissions. So there we are at, um, at 6 billion tons. And if, if you remember, um, the, the numbers in, the, in the, the Boyle and the Everett book have global emissions somewhere between 30 and 40 tons per year. So since we are one-sixth of the way through the year, multiply six by six, and there you're at 36. So it's, it's sort of a, you know, an average or a typical year in terms of CO2 emissions. But, you know, you, you, can, you, can, dig into that, you can dig into that and see um, how closely this year's emissions track with last year's. So we're just going over summary three, and I'm going to have you look up population, I'm going to also have you track CO2, and then, and then you're going to pick another variable of choice. So it's going to be very similar, and, and I'll, show you, I'll show you what's different. So if you, if you knocked the summary three and 101 out of the park, you'll do even, even better on this one. Are we going to be doing graphs and stuff too? Yeah, exactly. We'll, okay. We will dive into, into Microsoft Excel and do the graphs. More confident with that stuff. Yeah, well, it's good. That's, that's part, of the, part of the goal there. The one I was looking for, um, most so so obviously, population and CO two are numbers that are going up. Once in a while, I see people pick a number that's going down, like forest lost or oil um, oil left. Those numbers are going down. You can see that uh, you know we're looking at you know 1.6 trillion barrels, and that's going down at a rate of about a thousand barrels a second. Right, and that's about when you say it's about a thousand barrels a second. Yeah. Yeah. Take, 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 take. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, it seems like a lot, but a, like a thousand barrels of oil would easily fit in this room. You know, it's ten by ten by ten. It, it would. You could probably you could probably pack five thousand barrels of oil into this room. And so on the on the one hand. Like gosh, that's very fast. But you're like, if that's the, if that's just the global diet. It doesn't it doesn't doesn't seem as fast. I mean, you know, watching a thousand barrels of oil disappear in front of your eyes every second seems very quick. But it, you know, it's spread out over you know the the entire planet. You know, it's funny. Um, I think that uh, usually environmentalists or people who are like you know, really advocating for renewable energy are like 
looked at as like pretty optimistic, you know? Yeah. But when you look at numbers like this, you're like, wow, I think the oil industry is actually the more optimistic one. Cause well, right. To keep pumping, you false know, false like, optimism, yeah, perhaps, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, just, it's really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing that I, that one thing you, you might track, this this might be kind of cool actually to, to, to view. We can also see that um, every second, about a gigawatt hour of energy comes in from renewables. So that's, that's kind of the good news. And, and so at some point, and, and the way I, I kind of look at this whole thing is, is sort of a, you know, a teeter-totter. And in fact, hand me that little, um, I don't know what was grass. And, and we, we, are, we are really, even in Montana right now, we're really seeing that teeter-totter really start to, to tip in terms of what's called grid parity. So just, just since we're on the topic of renewables, one thing that we're looking at right now, I don't, sorry, I don't have a copy on my laptop, but this is, this is a graph. And what we're looking at here, if you can see these, these numbers right here, 0, 1, 2, 3, what we're looking on this graph is about a three-year payback on solar. So the United States Department of Agriculture has a what's called a REAP grant, so it's Renewable Energy for America program. And what it's what it's really trying to do, well, it's the USDA. I know. Remember? Those acronyms. Well, REAP, yeah, REAP, like, REAP wow, the energy, yeah. Uh, well, so the and what the USDA wants to do, so the USDA wants to see its farmers thrive. It wants to see th farmers and ranchers do well. Um, frequently, it's too expensive to, you know, get the grid all the way out there to run the, you know, to keep the cattle, water, liquid, to, you know, run the fans and pumps on the barns, etc. So the idea is put the renewables out there, and we've got a, you know, there are some pretty cool panels. This is not quite as fancy as the retractable one, but this is coming in you know, three to four dollars a watt, which is, you know, right on par with fossil fuels in terms of uh, cost. And what we're showing is that the payback happens very quickly. Again, within three years, the payback crosses that, uh, that axis at three years. And that over 25 years time where the system is um, warrantied, you're going to make, uh, gosh, four to five times your money. So if you want to you know, check this one out, that'd be an, a good second resource to check out. And that's probably something that I think Mariah would be interested in, too. So there's, like, the good news, if you will. And that 10,000 to 1 ratio is, is somewhat borne out here, and that you can see that there's about 10,000 times more sunlight hitting the planet than we're actually using in renewables. So there's, there's also some room for, for optimism there in terms of the future of renewables. Okay, so you're going you're gonna to do population, CO2, and then another variable of your choosing. And I think I'm just going to go back and... Uh, this is summary three you were talking about? It's summary three, yeah, it's summary three. And so the, the only thing that's different in the 102 version... Uh, so you're going you're gonna to repeat it two days later so you get some data. You're going to do a linear regression. You're going to do a quadratic regression. And a couple of students did a really nice job on this, this quadratic regression last time. A lot of times, the, the, the quadratic itself is not, you know, in my mind, it's not really a valid physical model. The quadratic model is, is great for plotting ballistic trajectories. Um, it just so happens that the quadratic fit gives you a curve to play with. The exponential gives you a curve to play with. The linear doesn't. So we're, we're looking at you know, one, one very simple model that doesn't give you any real bending. The parabolic does, and so does the um, exponential. So it'll, you know, it allows a, a rate of change to occur. Okay. Again, you're going to use the primary and the secondary axes. The only difference is that you're going to calculate the, um, well, one of the two differences. You're going to calculate the R squared value. And once you've got your data, and what I, what I strongly re recommend you do here, if you've 
feel confident about your 101 work, just use the, you know, save your work, start a fresh spreadsheet, and just plug in fresh numbers. Because you've already done the plotting. Mm -hmm. You know, no, no reason to build those plots again. Just, just, just plug in the, the fresh numbers. So you'll calculate the R squared value. And I'm also going to ask you, you know, since this is 102, and I ask you to go and do a little bit of your own research, I'm going to ask you to find where Worldometers is getting their data. So, you know, they, they're just, they're a little like Google. I mean, Google, of course, you know, has its own software. It has its own analytics. But, you know, Google is, in my mind, is just kind of a big, smart copy machine. And one, one little story on that. Several years ago, I was um, backing up my, my personal website. I've got this, this guy right here. Um, I've, I've, had this, uh, I've had this website since 1995. And really, this was before, um, this was really before the, the search browsers really came online very much. So I, you know, I, I, would, I would travel, and I wouldn't always travel with, it wasn't before laptops, but I didn't always have my laptop. So this was my Google. This was my indexed page. Where, and so whenever I had a new link, I would put it here because typically, you know, you've got your favorites. So I'm like, okay, here's my, you know, stuff. A lot of these links are dead, but. Yeah, I visited that site. But, uh, a lot of them are dead. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's really not, most of it's not for public consumption. It's just kind of my own little sandbox. But the point, the point is I accidentally deleted the HTML file off the servers, just gone, like forever. And I walked to my IT guy uh, this is when I was at Drexel. He goes, well, Google has a copy. So just go look up the cached version. And there it was. Uh -huh. so, the, so the point is, like I said, Google is just a big copy machine. A smart one, because you know, they'll, they'll sort it, you know, do the searching for you. But uh, it's kind of an interesting wake of college. There's, there's not just one internet. You know? <laughs> OK. So there's world of meters. Uh, but so what I'm going to ask you to do is go into the world of meters. And let's, I mean, there might even be. Yeah, there you go. So sources, energy, uh, a beginner's guide. So it, it could be that, that um, in, you know, world of meters just went into Baklov Smills book and pulled some data off of, off of one of his charts and then just lets it lets it roll from there. So oil pump today. Well, there you go. So the EIA, very reliable source. There's British Petroleum, Oil and Glass Gas Journal. I just clicked the little uh, plus sign. Yeah, pretty simple. So click that, and then you know, dig, dig down, go out to the other, you know, the websites for these, these journals, and just see what see what they're all about. And the the point is, I think they're compiling data from multiple sources. So, all right. Now, Rob, if, if I can, I pick on you and look at your 101 summary three. Sure. Okay. Because I was just I was just mentioning how how. What a good job a few of you did with those parabolic curves last time. And I wanted to show that. What does that summary three do? Ask Cat. I don't know. Summary three is due to the 14th. Good. 14th. We have two weeks. Promise that was due this week. Promise that's due this week. The exam is next week. The exam is next week. But yeah. speaking of that, though, I didn't factor in spring break. Yeah. But through did a new one. Okay, I'll break. put it up there. It was I'll put easy. It up there. I just moved all the numbers, you know, yeah. down. Yeah. Up, I guess. I'd say get cracking on summary three now. You know, get get your data going, yeah. turn in, and I I will be. Uh, so that's at least six days that you need to plot. Yeah. Like, get the data. Yeah. So the summary three is similar to the last summary three. Mm -hmm. So you just like take a screenshot, and then two days later take a screenshot. Yeah. And I will. Sh I'll show you. I'll show you the, the difference right now, though. I'll show you the, the differences here. Okay. Yeah. 
get to that. Yeah. Uh, Why don't I see your 73 here, my man? I have no idea. Let's see. Who else? Um, I don't know. <laughs> let, me, let me take a look at it here. This is from last We did similar exercises. So this is like Gavin. So in this case, we can just use that whole you took, you took Energy 101. Yeah, yes, you did this. Yeah, I, 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 if, if I do, oh, yeah, if I do, I'll be happy to share them with you. Yeah, my laptop is a little slow today. I do not know what's going on. Have you done a disc cleanup lately? I did a, br I, mean, this, this, I just got this back from the factory. Oh, okay. Yeah. They well, they, they try. I've just got so much on this um, machine. Okay, Here, here's what I'm going to highlight. So I'm going to I'm going to highlight because I know um, Rob and Kat turned in you know, some pretty nice assignments. So here's what I want to highlight: your initial three data points are, are right there. One, two, three. So day day zero is whenever you take your first measurement. Carbon population. I don't care which one's on the left axis, the you know axis, the right axis. Um, I'm not in Microsoft Excel right now, but if I go in here um, and click on well, here's your here's your trend line. Um, what I'm not what I'm not seeing at the moment you do you do want to plot one on the primary axis and you want to plot one on the secondary axis once you have your data and you can see it's just it's just right here um, the student has taken the first uh, first three data points for the number of people in the carbon there's your linear there's your exponential there's your polynomial your data these first three sets are identical it's, 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 it's the same data. What's different is that once you plotted it, you're going to pull the slope and you're going to pull the y-intercept. And you're going to use the slope and the y-intercept to predict that fourth data point. So Excel is, going to, Excel is going to give you, let me make this a little bit bigger. It's right there. Oh, it didn't pop out there, did it? Yeah. Make that a little bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, this is the this is the raw data that you're going to pull from the website. And you've already done this, so you just plug in the new data that we just looked at on the website. You will then um, Excel will give you. M, which is right there, 150, M equals 159,439, plug it in, boom. B, which is the y-intercept, 7,470,274,199, boom, that gets plugged in, and that gives you your predicted value, your extrapolated value. It's really good to know why. It's very good to know why why equals mx plus b. So if you haven't used it before, here's your chance. <laughs> yeah, and this you know, and this is exactly what biostatisticians do all day long. They, they predict the future using mathematics. Okay, so then the exponential. Let's see. I, I don't know what happened here. Let's see if we can let's see if we can actually run the exponential while we're looking at it. So that's. We're looking at human population, oil, and gas. 
we are looking at um, human population and carbon emissions. You're not going to use these numbers. Okay. Yeah, and then so it'll be different now. Probably a lot higher. <laughs> You're going to use these numbers. Yeah. You're going to take your own data from, uh, from the website. Okay. So what we so this is linear. Let's see if we can't fix this exponential. Uh, well, there's the there's the equation. Somehow it somehow it snuck in there. So we've got a equals uh, seven billion four hundred. Let's let's just pop that in there. A equals. Um, yeah, they must have must have plotted it somewhere. <laughs> let's just see. Let me let me zoom out. Nothing much else there. Oh, I see. Well, the yeah, it's because I know why. So this this person didn't actually run the extrapolation. So you can see in, in Kat's solution here, she got her first three data points, and then plugged it in, and there it is. In these Excel spreadsheets, that that never quite occurred. Okay, so let's go ahead and just let's just do that just for fun. Okay, so what I'm going to do. Is. Um, I'm going to look at the exponential here. So I'm also going to go ahead and split the screen. And what this is going to allow me to do is have my um, data up top and my um, figure on the bottom. So there's my there's my exponential, and I'm going to. I'm going to format this. You definitely have to have it as a number. And let's just amp up the significant digits. And I apologize, this is, this is so small on the screen here. Um, I'm not going to make it any bigger because I'll lose, lose the resolution, but I'll, I'll read that to you. So the A value for the exponential, and the reason for splitting the screen is now I can see the figure and the data at the same time. So I'm just going to type that in. Seven billion. 470 million 274,202 and it's a little little overkill on the uh, exponential but there it is and now e in this case to put my glasses on but there's one two no, it's up here one two three four four zeros so point Point oh 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 two one three, and I need to change the number of decimal places so I can actually see that. Okay, so there's my exponential for n. Now, this was sort of an attempt at an exponential function, but it didn't work because it's not the right function. What function do you use? Well, you use the one that Excel used. So, 40 days. 40 days. 40 days. Yeah. Yeah. So, equals, um, that's the value A, times EXP. And then the number is uh, that guy times that guy. Yeah, you just click it. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to. Yeah, I, I don't have to type in H7. I just click on the H7. Yeah, the wonders of the mouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So that's that's the value. That's the predicted value, and it is uh, it sort of passes the um, first order of magnitude test. We can see it's higher, right? You know, it's it's uh, six million or so higher than the other value. So it went up in the right direction. Carbon. Uh, here's the carbon numbers. So let's pull those. So. 35 billion. And so when we run this for Energy 102, we're only in March, the number is right around 6 billion tons. <coughs> we ran this, when we ran this in December, it was up around 35 billion. But so the, the other thing to, to note is the slope of the line it goes up. A and T, it's A. Well, yeah, A is is um, it's just mathematical convention. That's all. That's all it is. No, it's 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 Y equals A T tau T. Yeah, I'll I'll take. Well, sure. Well, here I'll I'll do it. I'll show you what it is. It's Y equals. Equals uh, um, a e to the um, tau t. I can just do that tau now. The I I've got a macro in here that um, I converted it to uh, symbol. Okay, you have those those symbols memorized. Yeah, t and tau are you know pretty simple. Yeah, and that rate of change. Yeah, so just for a little bit of background on an exponential curve, um, an exponential curve is, is one where the, the slope is proportional to the value. It's, all, it's, it's as simple as that. It means that the more you have, the faster it goes up. Or the less you have, the faster it goes down. That, that's, that's, that, is what an exp that, that is the definition of the exponential is that its, its value is directly proportional to its slope. So the, the higher the number gets, the faster it goes up. That's so it. So it's the perfect sort of equation to consider the growth of human population versus the emissions that are going to be prevalent. It's yeah. A right. So in putting those, you have first day that same value. Second day, you have the second value. Yep. I mean, you could just use both of those X and Y numbers, and then that's the first. You step. don't use those. No. Nope. One to forty. No, nope, you don't use those. Okay. The um, the values that you the values that you put in your model, that the raw data, Excel finds the equation for you. Hmm. Excel finds A and T just like it found X, M, and B. So if I put that first top one in zero two four four, you just pull down, and then it'll it'll. Estimate that for you. Well, or you have to put a certain value in there. Well, you see the, the three points on that graph down there. Right. You put the three points of data on the graph, and then you um, look at the trend line, and that provides the equation for you to put in. And then you can take the numbers that he's entering in right now and um, make the change of the coordinate extrapolation. Okay. So instead of having them first three data points, zero, two, and four for days, you would enter the same four and okay. And then that gives you your, your fourth um, point, which you see here soon. Yeah. yeah. So, you're, so you're, you're, pull, you're pulling in, so step one is you pull in the raw data, which, and you just type it in. So you're, 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 you're just, it's passing through your head and back into the computer. Step two is you tell Microsoft Excel, fit that to a linear model for me. So you have to find your change in that day, per day to day. No, you don't. No. Microsoft, I mean, Microsoft tells, tells you. I mean, yeah, it's, right, so you it's just right there. You click and then you're putting in a chart, uh, linear, an exponential line graph. 
There are, um, I've got a dozen videos that show how to do the whole okay. thing. Yeah, oh, so yeah, it's, it's all, yeah, they're all out there. Right? <laughs> so I'm just going to hop to the 102 here. Um, so, so there's that. And then the other kind of cool thing, if, um, so we already, we already ran the equation for um, population, and there it is, the exponential function, so we start, so it's 40, Yeah, no, it's, so it's, again, it's back to this guy. Um, a, you just, just call that the, the coefficient. You know, it's just, just, just the coefficient. And then uh, T, or tau, is the time constant. So the, the units of time are, in this case, days. And so the units of tau have to be 1 over days. If time was measured in seconds, Tau would be measured in hertz, right? Because this, that number, whatever the product of those two numbers is, it has to be dimensionless. You can't have, you can't have units on it. It's A that carries the dimensions. A will have units of people or carbon or joules or what have you. Uh, tau times T they have to be inverses of each other. Constance, the reason why the original data is so important. Yeah. yeah. So the smaller tau is, the, the, the slower the thing grows. If it were negative, it would bend down instead of up. OK, so we got the data. And now and we got our equation. Now we can do this, I think. Well, actually, let me show you one other little quick trick. If I, if I pin H7, I can do it like this. I can say I want to stay in column H. I put a dollar sign there. Sometimes you put it in between. What does that pin do? If I put it in front of the column, it pins the column. If I put it in front of the row, it pins the row. If I put it in front of both, it pins the cell. So it just means that if values change, nothing, the other values won't change? It doesn't have anything to do with the value. It has to do with the relative positions of the cells in the spreadsheet. Okay. So, so I'm going to adjust them. If you wanted to move them, you would be able to. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drag this over here. Okay. And it, 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 I, pinned, I pinned H, and it stayed there. But it, it dragged over. Uh, it dragged over the I for me. So that column just, you took what was in that I column, pulled it over to the J column, exactly. and adjusted it. Exactly. And yeah. without, because if you hadn't pinned it, what would have happened? Oh, sure. If I hadn't pinned it, <laughs> it's like, what's going on? I don't know. It's like, I don't even know what, that's too big of a number for me to think about. I, I can't have, um, you did the row. I pin the column. Cool. Column H. Saves a lot of time. Yeah, because I mean, you already went to the trouble of typing the thing out and you got it right, so whoopee, copy paste. Plagiarize yourself right there. So 38 billion is the prediction. Now what we can do is since the um, these nice plots have occurred, so I'm trying to figure out where this person actually plotted the prediction. So it's here. Let's zoom in again. And now I want to zoom in on, all right, there's linear. Well, what, what's What's, what's baffling to me is normally you'd, you'd click on this guy and you'd see where the data came from. Maybe you just can't see it because you're on visuals. Let me see. Here, give me, give me, give me a second. I've got I to find that. So we can 
So. No. <laughs> the. Okay, there's that. And so you, 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 you click on the graph, and boom, there's the data comes from. No, it's just, it's, it's just not, I'm not clicking for me right here. I'm going to get rid of the trend line because it's... I should be able to see the oh, raw data. So there's linear. Okay. So now I've got all four. Okay. So there you go. So, so this linear only has the first three. This linear has all four, which is what you want to actually put in your summary. Now let's go looking for the exponential. And I've got to delete these trend lines to actually see the data because the trend line you know, effectively sits on top of the data. Ah, they just plotted the linear twice. Oh, no. So you have four lines of population and carbon emissions and four graphs? Or you six graphs? You only need one per column? Well, you get Two for the linear, one without the extrapolation. You, you, you're going to have six figures. So, be two for each type. so you've got, um, so here, here they are, you ready? Okay. You got, you got, nope, you got CO2 and population, both linear. CO2 and population, both exponential. CO2 and population, both quadratic. Your, your favorite variable of choice and population. Which I thought basically, I, the only reason why I chose that one too because I thought the difference would show you the death rate. <coughs> oh, well that's, that's a good, like, it's a good place to start. Yeah, which I was like, because birth and population seem pretty synonymous. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. But the population depends on the death rate too, so I thought, yeah. <laughs> that's my reason. <laughs> well, it should be the, you know, the, pop, the, the, the population growth should, should equal sense. the, uh, yeah, the current population plus the death rate, or plus the birth rate minus the death rate. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, again, six graphs. CO2 and population linear. CO2 and population exponential. CO2 and population quadratic. So it's the same data with just three different yeah. models. Did you have to manipulate any of those lines when you input that, those columns? That's and you make that parabolic uh, distinction in the, when you insert that graph, it'll do that all for you. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yes, it is. Microsoft Excel is powerful. So there's that guy. Here is this gal. I don't know what their genders actually are, but there they are. Um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, well, you know. <laughs> so there you go. So you, you can see that these, and now um, what we should do too is add trend line. And we're going to add a exponential trend line. Kind of hard to see as yellow, but let's look, at, let's look at the blue one. We can change the trend line. Let's try to change that a little bit here. Color. Solid line. Black's a little better. Okay. And, you know, it doesn't, um, it doesn't look like a curve. It looks like a line. In the same way that for a very long time the earth looked flat because we couldn't get far enough away from it to see that it was curved. For no reason. 
And this guy, we'll put a trend line into. And let's make it a different color too, so that it's solid line black. Magellan No, Magellan Magellan was way after the Egyptians. There were a lot of the Egyptians and the Greeks. Yeah, the Greeks. There, there are a lot of I mean talk to your you know your Western uh, history white prof history. and they'll tell you which white guy figured it out first, but um well, I'll consider the ancient civilization before the modern day. Yeah. I mean, who knows? There could have been some uh, monkey sitting in a tree that figured it out two million years ago. How would you know? Yeah, yeah. I think credit goes to the Egyptians. Yeah, I think I think it typically does go to the Egyptians. And they probably and had connections with. Uh, it wasn't necessarily good to travel though. I think they yes. used to see it the shadows to figure it out. Yeah, they were looking down into a hole and somebody started doing work with shadows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some really really cool triangulation that happened uh, back in the day. And I wish I remembered the names, but... I think looking at the sun and the moon, because they're both round. You think so, yeah. The, the, the problem with the, the dang moon, though, is the same side always faces us, so we don't really see it. That's a little bit of a... That's, yeah, it's a little, little bit of a head trip that, you know, the same side always faces us, so you wouldn't necessarily see it as a sphere, because it's, you know... Yeah, that's a little weird. Okay. Uh, yeah, so there, so there, that's that. So we just did exponential. Let's check out the poly. It's because it's so much fun. And again, this data is all the same, same raw data. Where did this come from? Well, it looks like uh, there it is. So the equation for a polynomial. Um, well, equation for linear is is y equals. And I'm, I'm going to encourage you to use, geez. wow, what is going on? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Equals mx plus b. Yeah. yeah, use times new Roman. And... These all, these all have to be italicized. So that's how you're going to write the equation in your homework. So there's linear. And let's just sneak. To sneak the parabolic right in there. There it is. So, in the case of the parabolic, you have three coefficients instead of two. The, the coefficient c function in the parabolic functions the same way the coefficient b does in linear. It tells you where it crosses the y-axis. What's the special, what's the special thing that a does for you? A, a functions a lot like tau did in the exponential. A, a can have three fundamental values. It can be positive, negative, or zero. If it's zero, You've got a linear equation. Maybe it entails the function of the data increase. Something like that. What's it do to the shape of the curve? What is the true shape? Yeah, if, so if, if, a is, if, a is, if A is positive, uh, you've got a bowl. If A is negative, you've got a, a hat. Yeah, if your A is very negative, you got a tall, skinny hat. If, you're, if your A is, is very positive, you got a, a tall, skinny bowl. Is this, what did you say that um, equals 
squared, that's the um, quad quadratic. Parabolic, yeah, quadratic, parabolic, same thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So there's your linear, quadratic, exponential. So let's just see if this, this was written correctly. So M8, that's your A, yep, plus L7 squared, 40 days squared, plus M9, boom, that's B, times L7, that's your X, plus M10. Looks pretty good to me. So let's go down here and see how it plots. Delete that trend line. We'll delete that trend line. Let's just see where these came from. So close, yet so far. Well, we did a lot of work. I mean, did a lot of grabbing, but just didn't just didn't uh, drag it over. Okay. So there's that. And then, oh, I need the I need n. Yes, you've gone to the gone to the trouble. Let's uh, put a fork in this guy. Okay, and now we can go back and let's add our trend lines again. And you can see the default is linear, but let's just make it polynomial. And let's make it black again, so we can see it a little easier. Order? Yeah, when you change it to polynomial, there's a little tab to the right that has order and the whole down bar for the number. Um. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So the so the question is, the the term order. What's the what's the origin of that? Um, so this so a linear equation is a is a first order equation. Parabolic is second order, and if we had x cubed, it's third order. So you can just let you put more wiggles in it. Right. Yep. So it's just the, it's the, the that's, yeah, so this, so the, the two mean it, it's second order. And if, if, if we had a cube term on there, it's third. Oh, that's, right. that's just all it is. It just, it's just that number. And there's a, effectively a zero there. Well, sorry, no, there's a, there's a one here. If, if it was, if it was this, order equation. It's x x to the zero, which is one. So yep. just line, it's just a flat line. line. Uh, horizontal line. Horizontal line. Yep. All right. So from there, you know, just plot it. Now, the one thing that's different. Um, all right. Here's the one thing that's different. Thanks for bearing with me. And then we will get to problems. The uh, the hard problems on the problem set. Here's the one thing that's different. I'm going to take this and you know you, you can do it. I, I recommend just doing it for your original um, original data. Actually, I'm going to do it this way. You can actually take this whole sheet, copy it, put in a new sheet, paste it. I just, I just replicated the thing. And I'm going to call this one R squared. I can't put the subscript on that, but this is R squared. And I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of these guys. So from here, all you're going to do is take this data, insert chart and let's just do a line so this is this is carbon versus population this is showing that if you look at the bend on that guy it's bending up 
it shows it so it's more CO2 per person, which is not what I would expect it. You know, based on what we've seen with Shramsky, I, I'm actually thinking that that curve should be bending down at this point. It's like less CO2 per person, more people live in cities, et cetera. But this is the point, is we're, we're looking at those two variables as a function of each other. And then all we're going to do is um, you're just going you're just going to add a linear trend line. You're going to display the equation, and you're going to display the r squared value. That's it. That's 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 the only difference. So, in a lot of ways, it's simpler. So you're just going to take that original data, plot population as a function, of, and you can do the same thing. Like population is a function of renewable energy. Are, are we use, is like each person using more renewable or less renewable, and how how is that uh, how is that changing? Because the you know time is not explicitly shown on this graph. Time is implicitly shown. I mean, there, there still is an arrow of time here because that number is getting bigger and that number is getting bigger. So as we go from the southwest to the northeast, we are moving forward in time. We are moving into the future. And um, so what I'm, what I'm asking you to do here, and I, you know, if you want to, you know, dink around with, um, CO2 emissions per person, you know, you could do that. Just just divide the tons of CO2 per person. It comes down to be, um, what is it, about uh, eight tons per person. You know, and, and you could say, well, I did this over a few, so it's eight tons per person per year. Well, how many tons per person per month is that? How many tons per person per day is that? So you, you can play with it that way. I wonder when the last time we did Doing it all the time. Eva Rocky does it every single day. Yep. 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 Yes, sir. I'll tell you a story about that later too. Okay. So that's really the only difference for 102. So you're gonna you're gonna do those same graphs, and then you're gonna you're gonna plop in. Um, so have, you'll have nine graphs total. The first six should go easy because you're just gonna put in new data. You've already done it for 101, and then you're gonna add this uh, add these three. Uh, was it three or two? No, it's just two, because it's, it's, it's carbon versus population, and it's your favorite. So you'll have eight graphs total, eight graphs total. And these last couple, I mean, how long did that take me? Ten seconds? Because you already, you already, and then you'll take that. The next thing I'm going to show you is once you're happy with the way this thing looks, and, you know, maybe you can keep that on there, maybe not, take the graph, copy it. When you come over into Word, Paste this in a picture. Do not paste it as Excel. It will give you giant headaches. So paste it as a picture. Yeah. And that way, you know, it's, oh my gosh, it's too big. Let me shrink it down or whatever. And, yeah. so that's it. Then, and then the the R squared value. If those, if that was a perfect line, the R squared value would be one. It's 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 less than one. Yeah. So when you just um, highlight it in Excel, does it automatically put it in that format where you create a chart yeah. with the data? Okay. Yeah. The you know if, if we click in here. So and you don't include the forty day extrapolation. No. Okay. Yeah. I no. Just just go with that because the the yeah you're you're just you're sort of adding an, an extra degree of uncertainty by putting the extrapolation in there. Mm -hmm. So just just leave it out. Okay. What we're looking for is just the. The, the, the known correlation among known data, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so when you add in the trend line, mm -hmm. um, what are the specifics there? Well, you know, um, it, it just, it, it shows, I mean, I guess in this case it shows carbon per person. Okay. That's really all it is. The, the slope so of it is just, it's just carbon. trend line, do you need to make a specific type of trend line? Linear. Just use linear. Yeah. Just use linear. And this, this weird thing, this, this crossing line is kind of meaningless because we're just taking a little snapshot. It's really more the slope you're after. The, the B value is, 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 is really meaningless. It's just that uh, slope.
So two of these types of graphs. Two of those, yep. And it's with which data points, which data sets. So the first one, the linear data set, right? Well, no, the, the, remember the data sets are not linear, quadratic, or exponential. Oh, the models, solid. the models the are. The same all the way yeah, through. the data is just the data. Oh, so then we just want to do two different models with the same data. Yeah, you're, so, so if... One linear and one exponential, or... Uh, for the R-squared value, yeah. they're both linear. R squared is, is you're just going to use the linear R squared value. Okay. Yeah. So one for n versus c, and one and one for n versus births. Whatever your third thing. Yeah. Is. Oh, okay. Yep. That was yep. My yep. Yep. Okay. yep. 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 So that you'll you'll have eight. You'll have the, the original six figures. Then you'll have these other two, which are both your correlations. Okay. That's it for summary three. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, I've got a calculus quiz. I've got to go and ask some questions. Okay. I will record exactly what we need to do for that first problem on the, on the whole entropy deal. Okay. Yeah. Good luck on your quiz. Yeah.